<laughs> now, what should I, how do I approach this? I, it's, I nose it first. I would nose it first. Ah, fantastic. Is that what you mean by nosing? <laughs> <laughs> <Have I done? laughs> okay, here goes. Now, do you have strong ideas, strong opinions about whether you should dilute it, either ice or water? Or... No, it's a no-no. If you're drinking it without water, which you're about to do, I would only take a little sip and let okay. your saliva reduce the, the, the strength of it. <laughs> yes, we <laughs> like it. Yes, good. Like that, yes. good. I good. want, yeah, yeah. I take it, I take it. Pick him a good one now, David. One that doesn't kick. Yeah. Yeah. Now, how do I do this? Rest I've got the a... sheep. Yeah. Yeah. Sheep's head against your groin. Yeah. Uh, all right. You actually are in communion with that animal. I am there. Yeah, it is amazing that you, you and sheep are so one. Far. If I... Does the sheep bite? No. No. Well, I could do, but <laughs> you would need to be. You would need <laughs> Wait a minute. I, like, I, don't like the dis I don't like the disagreement here. <laughs> it wouldn't be. Or the potential. It no. OK. You're going to come in here. Yes. OK. Yes. You're going, you're going to let the... Let the head drop down there. Yes. Okay. Let the head drop down there. Right, you take your hand out of there. Yeah. Okay. I'm now, gonna, yeah. <laughs> Can't we just leave it at this? <laughs> you look great the way you look already. You don't need this. Pull Where am pull. I going first? Hang on a minute. Yeah, there you go. yeah don't pull the. Well, well just, just your hand. I don't need any advice from you, Dara. <laughs> <laughs> And now already he's, he's telling me how to do it. He won't do it himself. I can't believe it. Okay, I'm ready. Oh, okay. All right, okay. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Nicely done. Mm -hmm. In for my finger. Mm -hmm. Right, stop and go back. That's, that's good. Now try and lift your hand a little so that the point of the shear is on the skin. I'm an old sheep shearer, and I'm happy shearing sheep. Yes. Woo! <laughs> Not there. Right. Don't bite there. There is a manoeuvre where you've got to turn that sheep around. They haven't taught you that bit. And, and yeah. I dread to think what position you and the sheep are going to end up in. Oh! <laughs> <Whoa>! <laughs> went off at once. The sheep went off and the machine went off. I think we better now leave the sheep. I think the sheep picked its moment there. Whoa! And while the sheep was picking its moment, Rory has picked his favourite barrel. What a great day's work this is, eh? Yeah. How many bottles did we get out of this, then? You'll get about uh, 300. 300? Mm, OK, yeah. yeah. We'll just have to cope with 300. Do you think I'll do you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just me. <laughs> yeah. It's not just me. <laughs> Willie and the other 200 or so islanders are known as Jurachs, proud of their island and their whisky. Before forcing me to leave, he had a little surprise for me. Wow. Because you're something special, we are giving you, making you, I'd like to make you an honorary master juror. So I'd like to award you with this certificate, uh, which you, you can I'm... see there. So, and it's saying that you're now a master juror. Your name Number on one, it. so I'm the first. You're the first master juror. That is, I am so honored. <laughs> that is magnificent. I want to take a few bottles away with me. Uh, will it, how many? Um, how many am I allowed to take as Master Jurach Number One? Basically, as many as you can carry. As many as I can uh, carry. Yes. Okay. Thanks for that challenge. Is it, is it? Okay. Yes. So, while Rory has nearly killed himself with freebies, and I've nearly killed myself with a set of electric shears, we all set off to nearly kill ourselves with some sightseeing. Put me in the back of a really fast boat zipping over the water and I'll smile like an eight-year-old, particularly on the way to what's known as the Caravecan Whirlpool, a genuine whirlpool created by vortices and the formation of rocks around the islands. I don't know what to expect, but everyone we say to, we're going to Caravecan, they go, oh, Caravecan. According to people, it'll be done, there's like a step in the water, there's danger. Serpent. Um, it's like something out of one of those, like, Mappa Monday things where there's a whirlpool and there's like a giant tentacle coming out and grabbing boats down. I got a whole Jules Verne image in my head of what this is going to look like. If it turns out it's just a small area of water swirling gently, I'll be enormously disappointed. We've also been told that we have to get there by three because apparently the whirlpool knocks off for the afternoon. Apparently the whirlpool is on a pretty tight schedule, and if we're not there by three, it's got to go and whirl somewhere else. 
So that's why we got the hammer down, and hopefully we'll be there before Mr. Whirlpool finishes for the day. And this is a stretch of water, described by the Royal Navy as the most violent and dangerous in the UK. George Orwell, who wrote 1984 while staying on Jura, nearly drowned by rowing too close. Is that, is that it there? No, I actually that's a whirlpool. Thought... That's definitely whirling around. But it doesn't look as if it's going to suck us under, does it? No, it doesn't. Do you know what? I don't think it's a whirlpool. I think he's just driving around in a circle. Oh, yeah, he's going <laughs> to drive around <laughs> until, until, he's, until right. it starts. Honestly, they get bigger waves in, uh, in my local swimming pool and they switch the wave machine on. Perhaps the legendary Corrie Vekin was having an off day. It was quiet. Look at this, up ahead. Too quiet. Griff, I'm not sure that's the best thing to say near a dangerous sea anomaly. The whirlpool is angry with us! The gods of the whirlpool! We've insulted the, the whirlpool! Oh. Just because you didn't get a world food, you had to drain us. <laughs> It's a great, very, day. very disappointing whirlpool, I thought, really? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, after a morning drinking Jura whiskey, that's just what you want, a yeah. solid wall of water breaking <laughs> over you. It's just perfect. Perks you up a tree. Since we had inadvertently inflated our buoyancy aids, Captain Sandy decided to run us through the whirlpool. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> I just hung my washing up. <laughs> Can I get off now? <laughs> the puffer's boiler was still only halfway there, so our first night has been a gentle one. Lovely cabin I'm in now, right in the hole of the ship, actually, in the very bowels of Vic 32, which they used to use this for obviously storing all the stuff they were taking out to the islands or the ships or whatever, and now turned into these rather elegant cabins. Very quiet because you don't hear any noise in a steamboat. The steam engine doesn't make any noise. It's fantastic. In fact, it's so quiet. I have no difficulty hearing Roy McGrath snoring at all. With another day to kill before the puffer could take us anywhere, another day trip was in order. Oban is a small town whose population triples in the holiday season, the main draw being its ferry terminal and easy access to the islands. But for Rory, the attraction lies elsewhere. Oban Distillery. The second oldest in Scotland, okay. after uh, Glen Turret in yeah. the Creeth. When uh, Johnson and Boswell came to Oban, all it was was a distillery. This was all it was. In fact, Oban exists because of this distillery. Wow. And it's built up to be, you know, the seafood capital of Scotland. And Gateway. A very, and, a, and a very beautiful town. Gateway to the Highlands. Mm -hmm. Gateway to the Highlands, yes. Yeah. But do you intend to start every morning with a trip to a distillery? The doctor said, Rory, a distillery every day. Really? Yeah. And get it done by before 10 o'clock. <laughs> Brendan is the head of the distillery, and being an old hand at this now, I'm showing Dara the ropes. So this is 10 year old, but it's cast strength, so 55, 56% alcohol. Right. I'm just going to give it a quick nose, Brendan. You're, how often do you drink whiskey out of a jug? Daily. Really? <laughs> Smell that. Sorry, nose that. It smells of whiskey. Doesn't it? It's got a distinct whiskey smell. It smells of anger and regret. <laughs> Late nights in tears. Yeah, it does. <laughs> smells of yeah, yeah. Yeah, smells, smells of I miss my family. Yeah. Uh, but you won't let me near the kids. Yeah. That's what it smells of. <laughs> Don't swirl it too much or you'll just get a rush of alcohol. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> that 
That's a great yeah. face. So, I tell a, you what. That's an honest face. Oh, yeah, I can't. So Johnson, in all his travels, writes down everything he drinks, mm -hmm. and whiskey is never mentioned. Port, Madeira, rum, sherry, red wine. That's kind of before whiskey became a legitimate business. Back then, whiskey was farmers would make it from leftover uh, barley that they couldn't yeah. feed. It was just a way to make some more money, so they'd eat some was of the it, barley. Was that legal? Um, no, it was all illicit until. Was, was it like pushy? Yeah, um, exactly. well, it, was, it was still whiskey. It was still whiskey. It was the same process. It was simply done out in fields by rivers and they didn't pay tax on it because it was just illicitly. The whiskey they made then would taste almost identical to the whiskey we made today mm -hmm. when they had a good day, but there would be a real amount of inconsistency in what they produced. And the barrels they were using, I mean, did they discover that American barrels were good simply because somebody had to get barrels from somewhere? And... You, you, you made it in a field as quickly as you could, collected it in whatever um, mm. material you had. So some stuff they probably wouldn't even have put in anything, they'd have just sold it straight away, and that was rough. Griff, meanwhile, is also looking at whisky at one of the tourist shops. It's everywhere, the whisky. Look, this is the whisky shop here. And the whole thing, this is just the sort of Coca-Cola of the Highlands whisky, really. It's just a great big marketing sort of invention, a, a wonderful marketing invention as far as Scotland's concerned, because making whisky keeps the entire, the entire islands and highlands going, really. The actual whisky, the actual stuff, you know, the bottle, the labelling, uh, the stuff that goes in it, and it costs 15p. The rest of it is all tax, in fact. The government takes most of it in tax. Of course, I'm, uh, I'm only talking as one who drank his allocation of whisky before the age of 30. So I, I don't touch the stuff. Mind you, I have to say, <laughs> thinking back as a sort of reformed, bit of a reformed taper, thinking back, I have to say that the probably the most odious drink that you could ever drink was whiskey. Except possibly a cup of Scottish coffee. No, no, it was lovely. Just what we needed before going to the Kilmore Highland Games. There's long jumps and high jumps. Hammer, light hammer. Yeah. Get hammered. Uh, weight over bar. <laughs> what weight? I, I think anything that requires a strength or ability, we should not do. What, you think we should aim for skill? <laughs> yeah, skill. Oh, wait a second. Caber. Yay. This caber. You, haven't you tossed a caber at all? I'm, yes, I'm a well-known tosser around these parts. And uh, how is he doing? It is difficult. It, it is the hardest thing. You cannot. You, we would not be able to pick up the three of us one of the cabers they toss. Really? Yeah. Very, very heavy. But they there's do a junior no, caber. There's a caber for 11 to 15 year olds. We'll do that one. Okay. But to actually take part in the games, the rules state that you must be wearing Highland attire. Since none of us have much more than jeans and T-shirt, and most of those are soaked through thanks to a certain vengeful tidal anomaly, we head to the local tailors. So this afternoon we had to turn up completely as bogus Scotsman. Definitely. Oh, OK. Definitely. What bogus. tartan would you recommend that we wore What's then, a nice to generic? cause no I'm, trouble? We don't want to cause any clan I will get you something that will suit you. Is that how much it costs? Yep. Brian, what time Let's is that, Brian? Let's just go Can sailing. I... It's cheaper. I mean, honestly, you can get a full. Don't, don't, don't spoil it. Actually 745 quid. Well, let's get killed it up, then. Yes! Then you come, sir. I'm impressed by the fact that the dressing uh, room curtain is in a tartan. Yeah, yeah. It's a spare kilt for an extremely large person. <laughs> yes. Turning up. Well, well there's we're... an extremely large person in there, <laughs> so... We've got nothing that fits you except the changing room curtain. <laughs> we'll drape it around you, Lordy. <laughs> <laughs> You're right there. Uh, Human position. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'll tell you the other thing, though, that this, this suits Roy because I don't know, he'll look good in this because he has very shapely legs. <laughs> really? Now, wait for this. You know, we're talking about 20 years ago now, but he used to appear in these horrible lemon yellow, really skimpy little shorts because he thought it excited waitresses. And uh, when he turned, you, you'd be surprised about how shapely his legs are. Okay, I look forward okay. to because yeah. I, I may be distracted by how shapely the rest of them is. Mm. Excuse me. Watch yourself. Yeah. I feel alright? Good. Good. Yes! Fantastic. That looks just like a bath towel. It is a bath towel. <laughs> it is a bath towel. I just had a bath. Yeah. Yeah. 